All right, so I've shown this snare a couple times before in my buying and selling vlog, but I got this snare in a trade. It's a Fibes from the Martins era and has a fiberglass shell. It came with all the parts except for the air vent, the snare wires, as well as the part that the wires screw into on the butt plate. But I decided to get rid of all those parts because everyone I talked to said that they're annoying to use and really finicky and finding parts is impossible if you need replacements, so I sold them. But now I can replace those parts with something more modern and functional. But before we get to all that, this thing is in desperate need of a cleaning. So first, I wanted to clean up all the loose dust from the shell, so I wiped it down. And as you can see, there's still some pitting and rust spots. That's because this is a chrome wrap, like an actual chrome plated steel wrap. This is a magnet and it sticks to it. So I'll address that later in the video, so let's move on to the lugs. First, as always, I wipe them down just to get all the loose dirt and grit off of them, and then use a Q-tip with soapy water to get all the hard to reach spots. And then there was a lot of old grease inside of the swivel nuts, so I used a Q-tip and a drill to clean that out. But honestly, I was going through so many Q-tips that it was easier to do by hand. So while I do all that, now is a good time to bring up that July is drum month over at Sweetwater. If you're in the market for a new kit, cymbals, hardware, or even just a fresh set of heads or sticks, then now's a good time to pop over and see what kind of deals you can snatch. On top of all that, you can enter to win a complete drum set with a recording rig. So links to all the deals, the giveaway, as well as my current gear setup are linked in the description. So check out all the drum month madness over at Sweetwater before it's too late. Now back to the lugs to finish polishing them, I hit them on the buffing wheel, but instead of using a buffing compound, I used a spray on car wax polish. This is less abrasive and will also give them a little bit of protection. On to the screws now, I soaked them in some CLR and these are already bare metal so the CLR doesn't really hurt them, but most screws have some sort of coating on them. So if you do use CLR, it'll most likely eat away at that coating so don't use CLR is what I'm trying to say unless you are trying to strip that coating. Then after rinsing them off, I spray them with that car wax stuff to protect them from rusting. And after all that, I now have some nice clean screws and shiny lugs. For the tension rods, I soaked them in some degreaser. All I had was the spray stuff, but some simple green is probably a better option. And after soaking for about 20 minutes, I used a toothbrush to get in between all the threads. And I think I see myself getting an ultrasonic cleaner in the future. But once again, after a quick rinse with water, I spray them down with that wax to give them some protection. Now for the rims, I use some soapy water and aluminum foil to get all the grime and nastiness off. And on one of the rims, there was some dried on paint and this took it right off. The snare side rim is kind of jacked up. You can see it doesn't sit flat and it's also warped and looks like an egg. So I broke out the rim expander 8000 to bend it back into shape. A head will fit on it now, but it's not exactly flat. So once I found the high spots, I used the corner of the table to bend it back.
Now back to the shell. First, I got scratched by a burr on one of the lug holes, so I used a countersink bit to clean them up so I don't get scratched anymore. On one of the bearing edges, there are a couple of nicks and some delamination, if you can even call it that. So I'm using super glue for this. I really wanted to use fiberglass resin, but the few times that I've used it to fix other stuff, it's just really thick and doesn't flow very well. While with super glue, you can get it in different thicknesses. So for the nicks, I'm using the medium thickness and just dab some on the area that needed filling and spread it around with this metal pick. So I just repeated this until they were all completely filled. And also the stuff that I'm spraying on is activator so it dries faster. On the inside of the shell, there's a pretty deep scratch right below where the delamination is. So I switched to a thinner CA glue since I needed to flow deep into the cracks. Then the next day, I used some files to smooth everything over and blend all the lumps into the existing edges. And also I touched up a few spots that needed some more filling. So once I was happy with the shell, I brought it into the garage to polish it with Brasso and a little bit of the stuff goes a long way. So I'll rub it in and then come back with a clean rag to remove all the excess. Then like everything else, I used that car wax stuff and gave it a light buff and finished it by hand with a clean rag to bring back that shine. I used a replacement air vent that fit the existing hole and screws together, but apparently I didn't film that. For the throw off, I'm using this one from Indy, which has adjustable mounting screws. I originally bought one from Danette, which also has adjustable screws, but it turns out that they don't go wide enough for the hole spacing on the drum. I'm also using the indie butt plate because it kind of matches the aesthetic of the drum, but also has adjustable screws and I could have put the holes anywhere, but I used a Ludwig butt plate as a template just so that the indie isn't the only butt plate that'll fit on this drum. And with the drum back together, all that's left to do is throw it on the kit and see how it sounds. But hold on, wait, we gotta switch out this kit first. 